So I have had this idea for a really long time and it keeps coming back to me. I mean, should I do it? Yes, the short answer is yes. I'm about to tell you why. So hi, I'm Sarah Walton. If you've never seen me before, hi, I'm an intuitive business coach and sales expert. And I love giving you tips on how to run your business without freaking yourself out. Oh, and how to have great insights into sales and money. Oh, hi. And if that sounds like a good idea to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's be friends. Here's the deal. So I had a conversation with uh, one of my students last week and I just knew I had to record this episode. And the question was, I know this is such a good idea, but I don't know. I don't want to hit send on this email where I could actually get the project started because what if they say no? And then I'm not sure I really want to do it. And oh my gosh, I'm so scared. And what if it's stupid? Listen, do we all get that? Like I bet you probably sit there going, yeah, I've had that exact same conversation a couple times, right? I know. Here's the deal. I really, 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 really don't believe that we get ideas that keep coming back accidentally. And my favorite example of this is JK Rowling. If you've ever heard her originating story about how the idea for Harry Potter came to her, it was very unsexy. This was not like some huge, ah, from the sky, here's what you're going to do with your life to make billions of dollars. That's not, no. She was sitting on a train and she saw his face. She saw a little boy's face with a lightning scar and the little wire room glasses. That's all that happened. How many of us would have dismissed that as weird or some stupid fluke or like, no big deal? I would have, maybe, the first time. I wouldn't have done it the second time because I really mean what I say. If it's come to you more than once or if it's something that kind of keeps surfacing, you gotta pay attention to it. And I would have paid attention to it the second time. But she took that and said, oh my gosh, I want to know his story. Now, yes, I'm a Harry Potter freak, but can you take a second and think about what the world would have missed out on if she hadn't asked herself, what is that kid's story, right? Now she was already a great writer. In book one, right, there are hints about what happened in book seven. Like this was clearly her talent, right? This was her skill in life, was to be able to tell intricate stories in a beautiful way, no question. And she could have ignored that face that day. And I want you to think about if you've ever been to Harry Potter world, let's just start there, how many jobs would not have been created? But we've also got the books and all of the people the books employed. Do you remember the lines outside the bookstore? Do you remember Amazon was just coming in? People were pre-ordering book four, like that had never happened before. She broke trends, she broke an industry, then we got the movies and all of the work that created for other people and all the hours of joy. Why? Because she saw a face one time on a train in an afternoon. That's how ideas come to us. And you look at the monumental shift on the planet, literally, because she paid attention to that one thing. Now, am I using a massive example? Absolutely, freaking lutely I am because I wanna make that point. Do you get what you're saying no to when you shun those cr crazy ideas? I really have found that when you've been given an idea like that, the idea needs to be expressed. But I really have seen this to be true that if the idea <laughs> is given to you and you don't do anything with it, someone else will. And that's not to like plant scarcity in your brain or freak you out or make you feel like, oh my God, I have to do everything I've ever thought of. That's not quite the point, but I do believe when something needs to get expressed, it's gonna find a way. And if you're not willing to do it, it will find someone else who will. I've just seen it. And I know there's an author who talks about that and forgive me, if you know who that is, please put it in the comments because I'm sorry, I don't know where I heard it. It's not original to me. She was saying, if I don't write a book when the idea comes to me, I end up seeing the book, someone else wrote it. And if you are not willing to be the person who accepts that idea or who takes on that challenge and goes to the intricacies of writing book one, knowing how book seven's gonna end, if you choose not to do that, it will come through some other way. So if you have like what feels like a crazy idea to you, go for it. Who the hell cares? Guys, that's how stuff happens. People have crazy ideas and then they get executed. This is why I call myself an intuitive business coach. I train you to understand your own intuition. And I just want you to take a second while you're listening to me right now, take a second and look around the room you're in right now, right? Just, just look around. Every single thing you see somebody built, created, or imagined before you owned it. Every single thing. My shirt, red shirt season. My weird Fitbit. I know everybody always asks, it's Fitbit. 
my awesome, I love this chair. It's one of my favorite chairs. I always have fake flowers. I know, I'm sorry, I kill everything. The lamp behind me, my favorite perfumes right there. All of the things that we just love and that we enjoy, somebody had to create. Here's the deal, my beauties. Yes, the answer is yes. Should I listen to this crazy idea and do it? Yes, okay? Learn how to execute well on it and then call me when you're ready to sell it and let's get it into the hands of as many people as possible. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you next time. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. I mean, come on, how good was this? Let's go.